Today we've got four of the best players distance irons of 2022. Thomas will hit some shots, we'll see what the TrackMan data tells us about these explosive clubs. Hey golfers, Thomas and Drew back outside on the driving range at Les Bolstead Golf Course and today we're covering players distance irons and four of the best that are now new in 2022. Uh, and I think you know, this is a category becoming really popular over the last four to five years now really has become a kind of a go-to for a lot of fitters that you know maybe those golfers aren't beginners but they're not you know really skilled kind of low single digits and this is kind of where a lot of those golfers fit in is right here. Right and these irons they've been released within the last six months mm -hmm. um, so ba basically December through to through the earlier in 2022. Yep. Um, so this would be a great comparison you talk about distance, you're talking about explosiveness, a lot of it comes down to the loft. Mm -hmm. The loft, you know, with these irons, we're talking probably around about 30 degrees on average with, with, with all of them. So naturally the ball is going to go a little further when you catch it in the middle of the face. Right, right. So the, the four models we have, uh, Mizuno Pro 225, that's the one that was back in December. But then the rest of these are all 2022 releases. I've got the Ping i525. We've also got the Callaway Rogue ST Pro. And we also got the Cobra King Forge Tech. So all, like you mentioned, are gonna be a little bit stronger lofted than your player's irons, a little bit more juice behind them, uh, but they should fly, you know, pretty significant ways, I think. Yeah, they'll definitely give us some extra distance, a little lower spin for golfers that want to, that maybe they just spin the ball too much and they want to pick up a little bit of distance. For today's test, we're gonna be testing also the Project X LS Golf mm -hmm. Shaft. So these okay. will be the same, same shafts as we're testing, probably Titus Pro V1X Golf Balls. Mm -hmm. Let's do some shots and see what the numbers tell us. All right, let's get after it. That was a better. There's a lot more draw with that one. A little one. bit more of a draw there. 185. Oh my. 194.9. Oh. <laughs> it's like, well, it was, it was fighting the wind and it still flew a long way up the hill. That was pure. No, that was really thin. Oh. <laughs> it's really soft though. For a miss it, it's a pretty good miss it. Yeah, the spin really didn't jump at all. Oh yeah. A better swing. This doesn't want to turn over for me though. You made some adjustment there. 188. 193.4. Good too. Ninety. Eighty-nine point three on that one. Oh. But your ball speed was over one thirty, so you smashed factor was one four six with that shot. All right. <laughs> Good miss. Is that a... Uh... It was just a little heavy. Oh, that's fine. Spin rate was probably just a little lower, but... A little bit, as in 47.44, but... Yep. That's okay. <laughs> Ninety-one. Ninety-two. It's fine. That's what it is. All right, well, Thomas, you just hit all four of those irons. Um, so first, you know, before we dive into the data, I wanted to get your opinion on that look and feel kind of element, because I know 
even looking from here, I can see on the faces, just the, the structure of the face is very different. Um, you commented even with like the Rogue ST Pro, how shiny that was looking down at with that kind of chrome finish and I can see it from here. Yep, yeah, no, it definitely, looking down at it, the, the Callaway Rogue ST Pro definitely looked a little bit shinier. Well, the other three had more of a, a matte finish to it, so mm -hmm. they weren't quite as shiny. Um, the face is kind of the matte finish with the Rogue ST Pro, but the the edging around the, the toe and the heel is definitely very, very shiny. Yeah. Um, so I've got these four clubs, sitting them down next to each other here. I've got them in kind of an order from what looks the smallest to the largest. Okay. So the Callaway Rogue ST Pro, looking down at it, down at it, it looks like from heel to toe has the smallest kind of profile. Um, a little bit more of a rounder edges to it. Okay. Um, so it goes Callaway Rogue ST, ST Pro. Next up, we've got the, the Ping i525. Um, that iron there, the most interesting thing with this one when you're looking down at it is you're seeing more grooves yeah. on, the, on the face. So visually, it looks a little strange seeing all those extra grooves compared to the others. Um, just a touch larger than the Rogue ST, ST Pro. Okay. Maybe a little sharper edging to it. Um, well, the other two, we've got the, the Pro 225 with the Mizuno iron and uh, the Cobra Forge Tech. Those two look a little bit larger. They actually look pretty similar looking, looking down at the two of them okay. there too. Okay, so, and then I wanted to ask too about, you know, is there anything with those grooves on the pain? Because I think the first thing that jumps out at me with the numbers is how consistent the spin was on the ping iron. I mean, the, the you know, the, the range or the deviation, the plus or minus was 129. And if we look through those shots, I mean, you're you're hitting it. The the spin on the, the ping shots was in the mid five thousands with basically every one of them. So, okay. um, on the groove, I mean, do you think the grooves had something to do with that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why they've designed that is they're trying to keep it consistent with the with the with the spin, and not get a flyer, not get right. with something or something that has a knuckleball at forty seven hundred to the next thing at six thousand. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised that the consistency number was the lowest there with the i five twenty five iron. Sure. Um, feel wise, you know, talking about feel, the Mizuno definitely felt the softest of them. The other three were kind of pretty similar with regards to feel, um, but the Mizuno stood out to me as kind of the softest feel yeah. off the face. And it seemed like it was a little bit quieter. When yeah, I was the sound, it. I, I noticed the sound just was, you know, you, that was the first one you hit and you, know, you expect that player's distance iron to be that hollow kind of clashing noise. And yep. it certainly wasn't that with the Mizuno. Um, but uh, diving into the numbers here, uh, the club speed was in the 91s for each club, so that's okay. good. Uh, the ball speed, highest ball speed was the Rogue ST Pro, despite being the lowest club speed. So most efficient strike there. So that obviously leads to the highest smash factor of 1.44, yep. which is very efficient. And so some explosion in that Rogue ST Pro iron a little bit there. Um, going over to the spin, the fun, it's funny because that's also the highest spinning iron of them. So it's got the lowest club speed, it's got the highest ball speed, it's got the, the highest spin. That is quite interesting. Yeah. So at 58.09, in terms of spin, next it was the Mizuno Pro 225 at 57.71, then the i525 at 54.64, and then way down there was the Forge Tech from Cobra at 48.79. That is that's quite so significant. That's a pretty significant less. difference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, distance wise, that also led to the Cobra being the longest in terms of both carry at 193.9 and total 205.6. Uh, the Rogue ST Pro was right, it was next in line there, 191.3 carry, 199.5 total. And then very similar were the i525 and Mizuno Pro 225, kind of in that 188 to 189 carry, and then 198 total. So. Okay, so for a player with my speed swing in 91 miles an hour, it's okay with regards to stopping power when you have the club that's spinning a little bit less. Yeah. However, I'd be concerned it's spinning at 47. Also, the fact that I'm swinging fast. Right. It's going to give more spin as well. So I'd be a little concerned with the spin rate if you're a golfer that already does not spin the ball very much at all. Right. If you're a golfer that definitely spins the ball a lot, now, we can, now we're talking with regard, especially with the Forge Tech, now you're going to pick up a little bit more distance right. and more consistency. I mean, you talk about stopping power, each of the other irons were about eight to nine yards between carry and total. Yep. Uh, but the, the Cobra King Forge Tech was 12 yards between carry and total, and that's a lot of that spin lands rolls out uh, so naturally the landing angle is going to be a little yep. bit shallower i would guess with the, the forge tech versus mm -hmm. the others yep so that one was 43.7 with the forge tech and then you had 47.5 46.6 46.2 with the okay. others so uh it, something a little bit different that lower spin changes that flight quite a bit yep 
Um, and then I also wanted to go over here and talk about this dispersion map because there's, it's, it's interesting, right? I think, you know, the Cobra, because of the spin, went further, but also was a little bit wider than the others. Uh, in terms of distance consistency, I, it, I think Ping might be the winner there. I think part, partially because of that spin. Uh, the Mizuno Pro 225 is pretty darn tight out there. Yep. And the Blue Circle, which is Rogue ST Pro, also pretty good dis the distance-wise. That's actually, you know, that and Ping are probably the best in terms okay. of that distance consistency. So. Yeah, I mean, plus or minus 120 RPMs of spin. Right. And you got five or six shots. That's, you know, you know the number's going to be the same every single time, which mm -hmm. is really, really important. Yeah, so with this information, I think one thing we want to do is kind of summarize. We, we talked about it quite a bit already, like which players will fit into these. We talked about, you know, in between that player's iron and that game improvement iron. But even further, then we can dissect this information and, and weed out some of the players that maybe won't fit the, for example, Cobra King Forge tech, which yep. is those players that uh, maybe don't spin the ball enough already. This is probably a spin killer that's not quite going to work. Right. But I would the... say that club there is for a golfer that, you know, definitely spins the ball a lot and is looking for just a touch more forgiveness yeah. than the other three heads. Yeah, because then it seems like, I remember you said too that Rogue ST Pro seemed like it was the, uh, the smallest iron and with that said, probably even the least forgiving of them and probably more of that player's aesthetic than the rest. Yeah, Rogue ST Pro and then also um, the Ping i525. I would put those two into the more better ball striker category, the player that is demanding precision, demanding that consistency on the, on the spin every single time. Yeah. Um, Mizuno is going to be, you know, kind of fall in between there where you're, you're demanding precision, but you're, you're looking for just a little bit more forgiveness with that little yeah. larger profile. Yeah, and I also think that with the Mizuno, with any Mizuno iron, really, you're looking for that field element, too. Like, if you're really, that's a huge part of your iron selection process is soft feel. Any of these Mizuno, you know, the MP line and this uh, this Pro line as well, they're all going to have great feel. All right. Yeah, no, they're all great options. We're lucky that we get these players' distance irons coming in, and I think it's been a great addition to what we can fit at second swing, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I mean, I think these are definitely for the best players' distance irons in 2022, I think some of the favorites that you've been fitting customers into this year. Uh, and as we said, it, if you're interested in any of them, it's all about coming in, getting fit, and testing them for yourself to see which is best for your game. Uh, but Thomas, thanks for you know coming out here today, giving your insight, hitting all the shots. I think uh, golfers really like this one. And like I said, this category is growing, so this is uh, you know pertinent information for a lot of players. Yep, not a problem.